me. One of my favorite is in, south of Florence. It's in a Certosa, uh, a monastery, a Carthusian monastery near Galuzzo, just south of Florence. And when you approach the Certosa, it's up on top of a hill. You've got to go through these canyons and valleys to get to it. You go up a steep hill to approach it. And then when you get there, you park your car, you knock on the door, one of the monks will let you in. It's open to the public. They take you where you want to go in the monastery. They take you to the church to see the art. And you walk through these labyrinthian corridors. But if you have the time and you know to ask to do it, you want to walk up to the top where they chose to put the monks' cells. And the monks' cells are in a simple rectangle, a simple open space with grass in the middle. And when you walk out from all these corridors and hallways through the, from the church, and you walk out there, it's such a surprise because the sky just takes over. I had to take a minute to figure out what it was, was so powerful, it was affecting me so much. And I even had to go back and look at pictures to remind myself there was a little well out there and there's some graves that were worth looking at, but it was the sky that was formed by that space that dominated and was so powerful. And I realized that the monks' cells which surrounded this square, the monks were looking out to rugged nature, to the mountains in their cells. But when they walked inward to the church, they walked into this simple square that was controlled the sky. It was so peaceful and so powerful at the same time. I would challenge us to do because these open spaces should be the organizing principle of our complexes, of our buildings. Uh, they're essential to our well-being. And that idea is so relevant to health and health care. During the Industrial Age, medicine realized that germs caused illness and that pollution can trigger disease in immune-suppressed patients. The sick were separated from the healthy. Buildings became more compartmentalized and hermetically sealed. Private space became more important than public space. Today, the assumption that patients should always be separated and isolated is no longer the prevailing wisdom. Instead, we find increasing emphasis on patient rights and on family participation in caregiving and healing. Given our contemporary healthcare environment, how does public space in general relate to healthcare public space? What's similar and what's different? In truth, all of the formal typologies that we've looked at apply to healthcare. There's organizing elements, there's certainly dynamic conduit, and even more certainly, there's transition zones. The things that are unique, environmental factors, the need for control of the same germs that drove hospitals into entirely sealed environments, the different range of users, the users specific to hospital, be it staff, doctors, guests, patients. The adjacencies might be entirely different than what you find in a public gathering space, and the architectural character serves the function, so it becomes unique to healthcare. So it's a complex issue. There's no simple answer here. As much as we can say we have, in the discipline of building architectural spaces, commonality to general public space, there's as many indications that it can't be the same. So let's look at some examples that address these exact issues, and then some observations about them. Each of the five listed here can teach us something about blend, can teach us something about spaces that we know will design for healthcare, but that we can borrow examples or learn from non-healthcare design. A collector space may be as active as an inner city plaza. One will find themselves dealing with noise level, the disorientation of activity, and the pluralism of collective experience. Hospital design will do well to be very intentional about this. This is prior to being in the sealed environment of hospital, the sick being separated from the healthy, a loved one saying goodbye before one goes into a procedure, and it holds the complexity of collective experience. Collector space, of course, can function at a variety of scales. Of all the environments of a hospital, collector space is probably the most in need of sensitivity, of cultural sensitivity, part of a city, part of a region, part of one's culture. 
introspective space implies being one step removed from the full intensity of collector space activity. In introspective space, there may still be high population and diverse population, but it's intended for a different effect. If it's not a calming space, it's not successful. It's not introspective space. How do we design introspective space to reduce noise level, to make it feel like the environment where one would be passive, be accepting? How can a space feel like a deep breath? An introspective space is not automatically an enclosed space, and certainly not inevitably private. Introspective space does imply repose. One might argue that the most successful introspective spaces borrow natural daylight and show out onto something that reinforces the environment created internally. As we move one layer deeper into a healthcare facility, we encounter what we might call a purpose space. This space must accommodate high efficiency, and yet there's still the constant flux and movement of user volume. We don't any longer have the luxury of quiet because there's inevitably noise levels in purpose space, and it's inevitably dynamic. Purpose spaces can be complex because while something very specific is going on and was designed to go on, it's still necessarily transition. In the context of healthcare, there will be nervousness, there will be fear. Inevitable to purpose space in a hospital, as designers, we deal with anxiety, even fear, how does one appropriately design such a space? Certainly there's need for reassurance. There's need for a sense of professionalism, attention to detail, care. These can be manifest through lighting, through clarity of design, through focal point. And purpose space comes in all forms because there's how many purposes within a facility. Perhaps the most difficult to design and certainly most difficult to conceive of as place is mover space. It must facilitate clear movement. We must understand the ebb and flow of user volumes and user mix, and yet there's need of controlling noise level, even while acknowledging that it's highly dynamic space. In every one of the zones we've described, there's the ability to, if not directly, to a greater or lesser degree, borrow from our thought about pure public space. Mover space may be the best example of this. And design can reinforce confidence by designing mover space to be least different from public experience. To borrow from our understanding of public space in general can be valuable, and there's a time when it's necessary also to say we are in a hospital, to take the experience of a patient within a hospital very, very seriously. We've coined a term today that we'll call switchboard space. Increasingly specific to healthcare design, an array of uses and very specific uses must happen in this type of space. And it's facilitated by clarity of organization, by moderate noise level, by clarity of wayfinding. And there's a subtlety. This is a highly dynamic space. This is a space of efficiency, but it's also perhaps more than, than most spaces in a hospital required to be a place of reassurance. This is the sort of thing that we all feel like we already understand, but think about it. Don't take this for granted. This is worth thinking about. Switchboard space often sits adjacent to collector space. If a switchboard space is hard to find, or hard to use, or intimidating, or confusing, it's failed. When we're at our best, switchboard space is the difference between the patient experience, the family experience, the user experience in general, being positive, being helpful, being reassuring, or not. And we've tried to focus on lessons most easily learned from public space when designing healthcare public space. But the conversation isn't complete until we've talked about the things most unique to healthcare.